We recently did a video on Raspberry Pi 4 and some of you wanted to see more projects so I guess it's time for a sequel now. But this is not going to be that generic 10 best projects that you can do with Raspberry Pi. Rather I'll show you my favorite projects that I actually use and enjoyed making during this video. Like this subscriber counter which flashes every time we get new subscribers, a 3D printed giant AirPod that works with AirPlay, a DIY smart cabinet that works with RFID and NFC, a handy NAS to store and organize data, an obligatory pie hole. So let's begin. Let's start with the pie hole. For those of you who don't know, pie hole is a set it and forget it kind of a setup that blocks annoying pop-ups, malwares and websites from your entire home network. Check this out. This smartphone is connected to my home network and as you can see, it has ads. To eliminate those, you start by connecting your Raspberry Pi to your router and redirect the traffic to the Pi. Block all the URLs with a simple click and just like magic, no more ads. The way Pi-hole works is that it sits between your devices and the router and scans for every URL. Once it detects a URL that you have on the blacklist, it blocks it right there. You can even block websites with it. If you have kids in your home, great. If you want to build one for yourself, I'll link the complete guide down below. So why do we use it at TechVisor? I test a ton of apps and software daily and sometimes I also accidentally download malware. So using a pie hole ensures that my devices are safe. Okay, so the next project. Basically, it's an augmentation of a store-bought furniture with the use of electronic products, but wait. Let me just show you instead. This was just an ordinary cabinet with the drawer and a bottom section that I used to keep my laptop, smartphone and other handy stuff at my bedside. I being ridiculously bad with keys wanted a keyless solution. I used a Raspberry Pi to run an RFID sensor that would detect the NFC tags and when it finds the correct one, it would power on a relay, unlock the electronic lock installed inside the cabinet. The lock doesn't work with the Raspberry Pi automatically because it operates at 12 volt and the Pi runs at 5. Hence the need for a buffer. Or even use this fancy ring, cool right? As it is still in the prototype phase, the cable management is really bad and I'll try to tidy up in the future. I made this next project because it sounded cool. See what I did there? So I had the speaker lying around which no longer worked. I guess it's Bluetooth is busted, ports no longer work. I mean I could fix it but who's got time for that? So I pulled the driver out of the old speaker and soldered it to the amplifier circuit which I got off of Amazon. After wiring everything up, I grabbed an old Raspberry Pi, ran an AirPlay server and connected everything up and put it all in a 3D printed giant AirPod. Printing and sanding took a lot of time. But it surely looks cool, right? I mean, it's not the best sounding AirPods, but neither are the actual ones, so I don't complain. Okay, so the next is NAS. In case you didn't notice, we switched to 4K and as the saying goes, with great content comes great backup. To give you a perspective, one FCP project in 1080p sits at around 200 GBs. Now the same project in 4K sits at around 500 GBs. Storing and organizing YouTube projects on individual hard disks is a nightmare. That's why we upgraded to a professional NAS. Actually, we got two NAS systems. One we got from Amazon and one we built with this. So here's my comparison. The NAS created on Raspberry Pi is actually a simple Samba server which works well for us and supports both Windows and Mac. WT and Raspberry Pi NAS both have similar capabilities. You can create users, access it remotely, assign or restrict access, create RAID configurations, etc. The only difference are that Raspberry Pi NAS has a command line interface and WD has a GUI. 
The only drawbacks with the DIY version is that you don't get a rack to neatly organize the disc like you get with this WD NAS and it has lower transfer speeds. But for one fifth of the price of WD, you can't beat this. In our previous Raspberry Pi video, we made a small subscriber counter that showed YouTube subscribers at all times. But you know what? Let's take it to the next level this time. To complement the existing subscriber counter that Manal keeps on his desk, I made a glowing YouTube button that flashes every time we get 1000 more subscribers. To demonstrate, I made a second YouTube channel because asking 1000 people to subscribe simultaneously would be something PewDiePie would do. It only has one subscriber and whenever someone new subscribes, the logo flashes immediately. The code is really simple and works like this. You generate an API key using your Google Cloud account. It would help you extract the subscriber details and pass it to the Raspberry Pi, which in turn powers the YouTube play button using the GPIO pin. Sounds complicated, but if you've ever worked with the Raspberry Pi before, it'll be a cakewalk. I'll link it down below so that you can build one for yourself. These are some of the cool projects that we did at TechWiser. I'll leave the links down below. And if you have any new ideas, let's start a conversation. This is Kaushal signing off. I'll see you around. <laughs>